Let's now turn our attention to non-communications EMI. In general, we can say that our EMI is occurring when we have a transmitter that is sending a signal to a receiver, and that signal is being sent through some medium that's connecting our two components. And so I'm being kind of vague about that. We're gonna come back later and list exactly how this signal can be transferred in a minute. But first, let's consider this general case of some system that has a battery and a microprocessor. And so let's say we have this, this case where our battery is sending some unintended signal to our microprocessor, which is interfering with its intended operation. So in this configuration, we could say that our battery is behaving like our transmitter, or we could also call that our source. So this is our source of our EMI, which is transmitting this signal to our victim of the EMI, in this case, our microprocessor, which is acting like a receiver. And then of course, this signal is being transferred through some medium, and we can say it's along some transfer path. And again, we'll come back in a few minutes and write explicitly what we mean by the different ways that the signal can travel between source and victim. So the main difference between what we're showing here and our communications EMI is that this source and this receiver were not designed to transmit and receive respectively. So we're not designed to transmit slash receive. So basically we don't want them doing this, whereas we saw with our communications EMI, we want them to be transmitting and receiving we just wanted to make sure they were only doing it at the frequency that we intended for. The other thing to note about this source and victim is that our source and victim are typically not optional. So most circuits are going to need a, a, some type of power supply and microprocessors are increasingly common in any type of uh, anything that's beyond sort of basic level circuitry. So our source and victim are generally not optional. And so what that means then is if we can't get rid of our source, we can't get rid of our victim, what we're gonna focus on is this transfer path and how we can essentially block this from occurring. So from here, let's say that means our focus is on preventing that transfer path or transfer method. And so, of course, if we're going to be looking at preventing transfer paths, we need to have a better understanding of what possible transfer paths there are. So, how is our electromagnetic energy transferred? So, it turns out there are several different ways that this can happen. The first way is by conduction. And so that's essentially if we have some type of conductor connecting our source and our victim. The second is electric fields or capacitive coupling. Our third is magnetic fields, or inductive coupling. And then our fourth and final type is electromagnetic radiation. And so typically what we're going to see is that one of these four is going to dominate. So as we're designing the system, we can just focus on one and we don't have to necessarily worry about all of these at any given time. So what we're going to do in the following videos is we're gonna look at examples of each of these four EMI transfer paths, and then after we have a good understanding of each of those, we're going to go back and we're gonna talk about different ways that we can limit our electromagnetic interference.